Welcome back to Anderton's TV. Uh, the legend that is Rabir Massad is back with us today. Hello. Um, and I'm interested to have a conversation with you and with you about um, how you're now using your quad cortex uh, as a hybrid rig with um, conventional valve amplifiers. And I'm kind of interested in having, um, hopefully a sort of a broader conversation about when would a guitar player just have that on its own? When mm -hmm. might you just take a, an amp out with you? And what, you know, do you think that the, you know, this is this your ultimate rig to, to try and use the two? So for people that don't know, what was your backline kind of journey from, you know, amps originally into then pedals and then into sort of your first experiences of modelers and all that, you know, where, how did it go? Well, it was, it was, you know, the, uh, always amps. JVM was the mm -hmm. first one with a few boss pedals and then it was Victory. Uh, after the JVM I went straight to the Victory Kraken with the stereo rig. And, well, actually I had the 5150 and the JCM 900 with my pedal board, but that was, yeah, I had my Strymons because they were stereo and I remember wanting to do that. So it was always stereo amps and pedals for reverbs and delays. And then I got into fuzzes and everything. So then Victory, big pedal board, gig rig, Strymon, Strifecta, fuzzes, overdrives, octave. It's always been that. Yep. So. So how, when the Quad Cortex came out, was that initially then just about replacing the pedal board? Or did, was it more about replacing the whole thing? Well, it's like, I, I, I never used modelers really up mm -hmm. until then. I mean, I used the, the Helix with Frog Leap and the yeah. Variax, but for me, that was like, that's for that gig. Right. I can't do it without that gig. So it, I didn't really consider the Helix outside of that particular context. And I would always, always have valve amps and pedals. And then, they did the neural plugins and I started using those a little bit in recordings going, well, this is great, but I can't gig this. I'm not mm -hmm. going to take a laptop on stage. So that was out of the question too. And yeah, when I tried that, I think because it felt quite ampy and stuff and I was really enjoying the workflow of it at home. And then this is like around sort of lockdown era, mm -hmm. I think. So obviously I got to know it really well and use it at home. And then the first gig out of lockdown, you know, was the Stormzy thing. And I had to use that. I think it was really after that, it was like reliable and felt really good, sounded great on your in-ears and um, you know, you could capture your amps. And so it had a, a bunch of new use cases, whereas other stuff didn't. And since then I've kind of, I, I seem to just jump between the two. So let, let's, I think it's, I know people watching Anderton's for a long time will have seen you know, will know my opinion of this. And I'm obviously perhaps in, uh, indicative of perhaps an older guitar player that mm. sort of perhaps feels less connected and, and, and even less open-minded to going down the sort of digital route. But I, d I don't want, I, I think it's fair to say in the last year, uh, I recognise now, uh, you know, why these will ultimately be the, 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 the sort of the device of choice mm -hmm. for many applications. But talk, talk us through kind of again, if you're in the studio versus um, a massive gig where everything's in here versus a smaller gig where perhaps you've still got some backline on stage. I'm just, let's just go through for you because I know it's important that everybody makes the decision that's right for them personally. Yeah. But wh when are you, I mean, let's start in the studio because I'm, I'm intrigued. Are you very much plugins? So we just, we're in the new band Vower mm -hmm. was just at Middle Farm in uh, end of October. And it was amazing because we used all of it. We had amps, pedal board, that, plugins, right. my, my uh, neural plugin. Um, and it was just jumping. Did, it was all about what's right for the sound, for the part. So we, we had 412s mic'd up with the Kraken. Uh, there was a diesel VH4. There was, um, uh, there was a Bad Cat amplifier. We had a, an Ampeg v, v, V4 or something, some crazy. Right. It's the one Josh Homme uses okay. from Queens of the Stone Age. So we had all these really cool amps there. There was a Messer as well. And... Um, it really was a case of 
What kind of sound are we trying to get for this section? Are you able to put into words in, in that recording context what uh, a modeler or was leaning itself to doing better versus an amp doing better? So from my experience in the studio at that time, I had my pedal board with like my Volante running in front of the amp to do the whole like delay in front of an amp cascading thing. Mm -hmm. and I found that that was, because I was trying to be quite specific of the part, the sound of the part, I found it quite difficult to get that quickly. Mm -hmm. And when I jumped on there and I just throw a tape delay in front of the amp, it, I, I dialed it in really quick, and the same with my plug-in as well. I put the delay in front of the amp, and I could quickly dial it in how I wanted it to. And I think where these things are really, really useful, particularly this one because of the workflow of the touchscreen, but where I find it really useful is that, let's say that you put the delay in front of the amp, and it's a little bit muddy and stuff. You just throw an EQ on real quick, dial mm -hmm. out the mud after the fact and then oh if it's not quite right then put another EQ and you stack all this you produce the sound that you want to hear on the yeah. record whereas with with amplifiers and stuff it just take a lot longer yeah. you had a lot of ground to cover in the recording process that I found it much more efficient to quickly throw something like and how we've got it set up today is how we had it set up as well so we had XLR running out direct into the yeah DAW. So that's what we've not got today, no. in fairness, is it? So we're only hearing this through mic yeah. cabinets. But we had that as a fail-safe with a cab block on there, yeah. but then we ran it like we are today and into amplifiers and stuff. So I was doing that same sort of thing, but it was combining with the amps as well. It was really nice to do. studio are you hearing are you do you tend to sit in the control room then and just yeah so even if you've been using before i use modelers it would always be so yeah even though you might be miking a cab up you're sitting in a room and listening to it through the yeah, yeah. um and is that you, unless you want feedback so you walk into the live room and just hold it there and let it feed so what, what's again for people that you know again perhaps aren't, have, aren't familiar with that what what's that what do you find that difference between being in the control room and hearing it which is much more like you know i suppose you know, a guitar player would have if they just had this through some studio monitors yeah. versus, you know, being... Well, it's interesting. If you're in a band and you go to record a record, uh, nine times out of ten when you're recording guitars, you'll be sat in the control room. You just will because it's the best way to hear the rest of the recording, the drums, the bass, mm -hmm. whatever's already been tracked. And for you to hear in how it's sitting in the mix and you're, you, you might have an amp head in the control room running through into the live room so you can quickly dial mm -hmm. what you need and then you crack on. It's just the quickest, most efficient yeah. way. So, so yeah, that, that is how it, it is. If you're in a band and you record a record, that's probably what you'll be doing. So then why, um, with a unit like this, and you know, there, it, it's, there are other units out there that will, will do similar, similar mm. sets of features and functionality, why would you ever not just use this in isolation? What, across the board? Yeah, why, why, why have, why, ever have this plugged you know what why ever set up this sort of hybrid setup well okay i guess a few things it's obviously this is all down to personal preference mm. but you've got valve amplification which is in a gig scenario or like if you just want that powerful feeling running out of a cab shifting air then you're only going to really get that through amp amplifying the sound mm -hmm. it's interesting when I've seen bands use these into the front of house, whether it's QC or Line 6 mm -hmm. or Axe Effects or whatever, it really depends on the frequency response of the PA line array or the sound tech that's mm -hmm. EQ'd it and stuff. And often I find I struggle to really feel the wallop and the girth of mm -hmm. the sound. Then I saw Carnival using 5150's JCM and Fractal, who's all mm -hmm. racked up together. And it was like just having cabs on stage providing that oomph 
made such a big difference. So I'm sitting in both camps. Like, what do you think you're, do you think that when you're at a, I don't know, say a theatre gig rather than a stadium gig or whatever? This has been in those kind of 1500 cap, 2000 cap yeah, venues. So, so you're, you're, even though the guitar's going through the front of house, you're mm. still hearing. You feel, yeah, you can the, hear the You roar can hear the, the amp. Cab. So, you know, fro direct from the cab on stage mm. rather than everything through front of house. I mean, it's funny. Some people don't like that because if they're in front of the beam of the speaker cab, they're not going to have a very good time. Right. Whereas for me, you know, when I've watched, I haven't been in that. And some bands angle the cabs away. Mm -hmm. But it, it's still, the, there's a low resonant, low mid resonance mm. coming from stage just because the cab makes that yeah. sound. And it, it really makes a difference to the thickness of the guitar. So, okay, so today's, talk, talk me through what you've set up today then and, and what application, you know, like when would you actually, you know, want to use this sort of setup? I'm in this weird limbo stage, but I'll talk about what I've done here first before I explain why I feel like I'm in limbo a bit. But what we've got here is there's a six cable method so coming. that's like the four cable method, but stereo, right? So yeah, basically what I'm doing here is running um, QC in between the preamp of, I've got an effects loop block here set up, mm -hmm. which is placed in between the preamp and the power amp of the Kraken. So really you could do this with one amp, but because I'm running stereo, that's why there are six cables here. Yeah. But essentially what you have is by placing that uh, effects loop in between, I can shift between a model inside QC that then gets pushed through the power section of the amp. So, so then you're almost just, I know it's not an FRFR kind of cab, but you're almost just using this as just a power amp. and a, Valve and power a, through a, a cabinet. Yeah. But yeah. it's cool because it's a flexibility you could never get with an amp. So right now I'm running a Lone Star um, <laughs> uh, model, and then I can flick between my Kraken and a Lone Star just because I've been enjoying the Lone Star. So I can have, I can have, uh, and you've also got a master volume. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've got my Kraken. <laughs> And then I can switch over to the Lone Star. Just because I like the way it sounds. And I've been using that. And the cool thing about this particular rig is by having my effects loop block, anything after that goes in the effects loop of the amps. So my yeah. reverb, my delay, yeah. anything before it goes through the front, like stomps. So you can still run overdrive, blah, 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 blah compressor still have all of that stuff happening, but in stereo. But, and when would you want to, you know, would this be how you would have your studio set up, for example, or is this very much a live thing? Or well, this your... is why I said I'm in limbo, because okay. right now with Vower, like we're gearing up to be releasing stuff and going out and playing. We've got festivals confirmed already for next year. And I'm now in this place where I'm like, I love my gig rig, Strifecta, dual amp rig. That is what I always envisaged I'd be doing live again. So you, sorry, so you think you might even go back to that well, this is pedal the thing. board thing, do you? I don't know. I feel like it's going to be a hybrid. I do. I feel like it's going to be a hybrid. So this and pedals and two amps, like I'm you're going to sure. sound engineer's <laughs> worst nightmare, won't you? <laughs> well, the, thi the thing is that with this, um, you know, as, as has been announced, plug-in compatibility is coming, which means mine is coming, which means... Yeah synth is going to be on there and that is a huge plus for me yeah. particularly with the Vower stuff there's a bunch of layers that i'll be able to achieve but it means having that yeah so i am yet to build the rig for it but somehow i feel like it's going to be a hybrid rig but very much wanting to have amps on stage i want amps on stage and yeah is, i want that amps on stage because same of for the... joe as well is that because of the types of venues that you think you'll be doing or just would it not I mean, I'm, I'm always interested when you get, uh, you know, big news at the end of last year was uh, when the uh, Edge announced, obviously, that he was just not going to bother with guitar amps anymore for that Sphere gig in yeah. Vegas. And I get that because I think the headline was the Edge isn't using amps anymore. But if you read th the context of that, he was like, the amps were so far away from me. No anyway, yeah. I, could, I couldn't hear them. So it was like, yeah, but almost that's, like, what was the point? Again, it's all about context, isn't it? You know, for, particularly for the Vower stuff, it's going to be smallish venues because we're starting yeah. out. If it was something like Frog Leap, where it's three, 4,000 cap venues, it might be a bit different because the stages are big. Mm -hmm. um, 
So in my mind, I want that cab thump from the stage. I want to be able to turn around and get feedback. You know, mm. it's that kind of music where I want to get things a bit messy and a bit intense. And have you? I mean, again, I'm just playing, not devil's advocate. What's the right word? I'm just you know throwing. But what, why wouldn't you then just use an FRFR cab, like a powered, like, you know, the Laney stuff's super popular. I know Guthrie's using it and stuff like that with his Axe effects. So what, what's the... Because I don't want to. <laughs> Simply, I want an amplifier. I w the, the idea that I could say, I need a Vox AC clean, because you, when you're in the recording process, yeah. we used Fender Twin on the clean sections with a, we used the copper... Yeah. which was the victory, so basically a Vox AC30. Yeah. So these are the kind of sounds we were getting. One amp, th and this is where, for me, the, the this it's not even an argument, but it's like, what's the best use case for you between a modeler and yeah. an amplifier? Yeah. An amplifier does a set sound. It's got two, three channels, four channels, yeah. whatever, but it's clean, crunch, overdrive, but it's voiced for that amplifier. Like the Kraken, it can do a clean, it can do a crunch and an overdrive, but it is, that is set. Yeah. In there, I can have any yeah. clean sound I want. So what I'm saying is that I want to use an amp, but let's say I need to have that Vox AC30 clean for that section. Well, I can run this in like I am now and I can take over the, the power section and have my Vox tone for that and switch back to have my Kraken and, favorite and is it tone still for then, Because you could do that with an FRFR cab, but it, is it just that sense? Yeah, but then it's not that amp coming out of that cab. That's what I mean. So you, you, you're, there's still a, a sort of a realism or whatever the right word is of using a real amp yeah. at the end as opposed to a power. For, for me personally, cab. yeah. Just because it's the, it's the feeling from behind you on stage that, and every originals band I've ever played in has been with amps and cabs and I feel like I want to feel that again. So it's a personal thing. Um, and, and someone might be able to say, well, it's all well and good because you've got all this gear, you can use it all, do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, I think it's down to, if you've been a guitar player mainly on modelers, mm -hmm. then you probably just need to use that. When you're gigging, and again, is it just very much each gig is different? Is your preference to give the sound man the emulated outputs from here, we'll give or them is an it option. to ask to mic up? We'll give them, an, we'll give them the option. You know, James has been doing our sound for years, and we've already talked about it. Is that he'll have the option between XLR out on there, and he'll put a mic on the cab. He might blend them. Right. At the end of the day, it's whatever kind of works best for the overall sound. Um, I get, I get the it's sense. The same every night through the. Episode. Yeah, I get the sense that the Vower band is so. It's different to many other guitar players' um, experiences in that it is a guitar-led guitar band. Yeah, it's a guitar band. So you know, so clearly it's worth sacrificing perhaps some of the convenience of only having uh, to have to take this to a gig in pursuit of those marginal gains of just that experience for you and, 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 and the well, audience. Well, it's the same with Joe, right? So we both have QCs. Right. And we he rigged up a pedal board and he was like, you know what, I think I might just gig this. And then I was like, yeah, that's, that could be a good idea. And then we ran a few rehearsals and one time he brought down his diesel VH4 and mm -hmm. he uses a Super Kraken. So he rigged it up with the QC, mm -hmm. so it was running for everything. And he was like, oh, do you know what, actually, I might actually use my amps as well. And we've jumped around because there's something that, if you're on in-ears on a big stage, 100%, yeah. just go XLR out into your in-ears, good to yeah. go. You're not going to notice. Yeah. If you play in venues where you can turn an amp up, great. Yeah. Use use that. Use a bit of both if you need more than just crunch, overdrive, delay, reverb, overdrive in front yeah. kind of thing. And I think it's funny because, again, this isn't a normal scenario. You have this facility where you turn amps, crank them, shoot a video. Yeah. Most people are sat at home or in a in, in a place where they can't. Yeah. Valve amps are loud. Yeah. 
in my studio in, in Brighton, it's a similar setup to what you've got going on here. And I can turn things up as loud as I want, but I'm sat on my own and I'll turn the valve amp up and go, that is loud. Like yeah. it's really loud. And the convenience of having something that's better for your ears. Yeah. And that's why I like this rig. I can still have a valve amp, but I've got a master volume that controls everything. I was, I was interested when you talked about, you know, the, the uh, Joe's rig. Um, Cause that's the, the one thing I've noticed consistently if I, you know, I've done a, not loads, but two, three or four festivals over the last couple of years. So you see lots of bands. Mm. And I always think when you see a band and there's two guitar players in the band and one's got these Marshall JVM or whatever it mm. is. And the other one you can see has got like a powered Kemper or whatever yeah. the rig is. Yeah, yeah. In isolation, each guitar sound sounds great, fine, mm. like that. But there's still, for me, something when the two guitar players start playing, there's a, there's a, there's a presence or a, or a, or a um, I don't know what, what it is. And I'm only in the audience. It, usually if it's a festival, like an outdoor thing as well, so it's like the crappiest sound possible. But it's like, there's still for me something, I feel like the, 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 the guitar player that has turned up with the real amplifier is just sounds more present in the yeah, mix. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe it's that the sound engineer prefers the tone and <laughs> decides to you know crank it a bit more. It's probably because the, other, the guy <laughs> with the amp just turned it up. Maybe, yeah. maybe. But he can, you know, he can crank it on stage. And, and it also might be because it's coming out of a cab, so it's actually, mm. you're getting more sound overall. Maybe. But like, that's the other thing is like, particularly again for us, one of us is on single coils, one of us is on humbuckers, one of us has a darker tone, one of us yeah. is a slightly brighter tone. And usually one of us is playing something that's a bit more, um, you know, not lead, but like yeah. higher up part that yeah. sits on the chords underneath and we mm. interchange. So I think that will also play a big part. This, do you know what, this whole, it, it takes me back to the, you know, talking to you uh, when you had the 5150 and the, and the, and the Marshall um, JCM 900 mm. and you would have two 4x12s and I'd go and see the band in the boiler room or whatever like that. It would just be the most inappropriate size. Yeah. And I remember the conversation about this um, 2x12 cab and the smaller heads being, well, I can have then my stereo rig yeah, on in side. essentially uh, what one 4x12's worth of yeah. space. And it means um, it's half the loudness because you're not running yeah. eight speakers, you're only running yeah. four. But I, I still think that's sort of this that's what shape we'd be using. of cab, almost like the reason why it went vertical as opposed to horizontal was this idea that, you know, essentially two of them would be in stereo in the same space that are... It was very, yeah. very much about, you know, aimed at emulating your, yeah. your um, two guitar rig. Let's, I, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued as to, so we, you, you know, I think you said much earlier on in this here that, you know, the Kraken is uh, voiced a certain way mm -hmm. to give a certain sound and therefore even though it has got, you know, a clean crunch and, and lead channels, it's still the a certain voicing. voicing. Yeah. Let's, let's just, let's put it to the test. So how, you know, could you get me a, a, um, an authentic Voxy sound or an authentic. Well, that depends how well or... I can dial in <laughs> the the Voxy sound. I, yeah, I'm just I think just be interesting to see. Um, okay, so what and I'm, I'm also as well. I know my personal experience with these types of devices. I'm yet to be familiar enough with them to feel like this is the fastest option for me to get the sound. I still feel the fastest option for me is to have a pedal yeah. board and. But I guess that's just comes with time, does it? Yeah, but you're still locked into what, what devices you, I've got. Yeah. yeah, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, we've got a matchless. I mean, there is a Vox in there. Let me find the Vox. So are these profiles or are these? No, the, these are the AMP models. So these are the algorithms, the models, the digital algorithms. Yeah, I'm just trying to that's find... A, that's another thing. Again, we perhaps people who've only been uh, relatively new to this, there's, there's two kind of accepted technologies for making a product like this sound like an amplifier. One is called modeling, which is where somebody sort of digitally recreates an amplifier and they can get quite deep into how tone stacks work and all that, you know, um, every element of the amplifier. And the other is profiling or capturing yeah. where it is, uh, you know, a snapshot of an actual 
amp sound. And I guess this is a model. This is like yeah. a, it's a measured, um, very in depth machine learned yeah. model of the amplifier. The same stuff they use for the plugins. Yeah, but I, I think where Quad Cortex is still um, not it's not unique, but it's it's uh, one of a small club that will do this is that you can do either. Yeah. on here, can't you? So, all right, well, let me, let's me let have a little listen. All right, so I've just loaded up. I haven't done anything to it, but I've yep. put us on a top boost. So that's actually the, um, uh, the AC30s running into the power sections. So where do so you- So when, I, when so I do that, now I've got cracking again. That's the crunch channel. And now so that's what the... happens on an amp model then? You know, AC30 is synonymous for EL84 power section, yeah. uh, Alnico speakers, all that kind of stuff. Whereas obviously what we've got here is a 6L6 power section and then I think cranebacks, I think, in these cabs. So what, what happens to, are we, are we only taking like the preamp yeah, element the pre of the AC30? Mm -hmm. So I suppose it's, it's, it's going to be a hybrid sound, isn't it, rather than a, just, yeah, we'd have to just come purely out the XLRs to hear the full AC30 yeah. experience. But you, I mean, you need a you need the right kind of guitar, I guess. I've got high output humbuckers, but it's got that slightly different, more chimey sort of tone than than the Kraken would naturally have on its own. Yeah, and I've pulled out the tone cut like a lot. Let's boost the volume. Let's, what else can I do? Boost the volume, like. I mean, it's not an authentic AC30 sound. <laughs> But well, I, I still kind of feel, so when you're doing the sort of the Vower thing or you're in a creative mode, I suppose this is what appeals about this because you can kind of just keep scrolling through yeah. sound after sound after sound in a way that you perhaps couldn't do with a with an amp. Setup. Yeah, like you're physically changing the preamp of, of the amplifier, but it still comes out of... The thing that it might not translate as well on YouTube is the fact that even though I've changed the preamp there, it's still getting valve power coming out of a cab, so it's, you still get that satisfaction mm. in the room of like running a couple of amps and getting that feel. And you know, when I've turned it up to full volume. I, I think that's probably the hardest part of getting across in YouTube videos yeah. is that thing that happens Immediacy. when all of a sudden, you know, a couple of 12 inch speakers start to sort of go and you know, valve power amplifier starts to go. Cause of course everyone listening on YouTube, unless somehow they've got their um, <laughs> yeah. laptop plugged into a valve power section, and you're listening through two twelves, is is ultimately hearing a a, a, a sort of a much less exciting yeah. thing than we are in but, here. But then this is where it gets more interesting because, for example, let me just do this real fast. So now, if I turn it off, oh, one sec. So it's not even the amps that you can just, this is like changing guitar without changing guitar essentially. This is where this starts to do things that you go, okay, now it's getting really flexible because yeah, you could use a whammy DT or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's a bit unstable. You know, yeah. it's just the, the design. Whereas this has way more processing power to... Could you put that detune on one side, but make the detune like the oh, tiniest, yeah, tiniest amount? So if I go like this... I never thought oh. of doing that. That's cool though. You've got to put your headphones on for that because that's that um, that accentuates, I suppose, the double tracked 
Yeah. It kind of adds a little bit of, maybe even a bit of chorus in there. But if you did it like, what, two cents? So it's just a bit wider. It fattens it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, I don't know if that's a, I mean, that's what those... Um, mimics do. Uh, TC mimic thing, but it, but it, it's, as well as the pitch detune, mm. it's also doing a timing... A lot of sample delay. Yeah, so it's almost like, but it's random, yeah, or, yeah. or you can make it random. So that the idea is, is in you know, obviously not crazy amounts, but as you're playing, it it sounds like the other guitar player sometimes is really, really keeping yeah, up with you, and then other yeah, times it's, it's a bit laggy. Sort of laggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what about if we do this though? Oh, what have you done now? We make one a whole a whole octave lower. Yeah, and we do like this. So one is completely 100% octave lower. It's got a pog vibe to it now, hasn't yeah. it? Does that look That's cool, isn't it? Now we could not have done that without, I don't know, even if we had a pog in here, we'd have had to get it, plug it into one side, work it out. Mm -hmm. And then you might have gone, oh, I don't really like it. And then you've just wasted 20 minutes or whatever like that. But you've plugged this in and we've done two things now. One, a slight pitch detune and one with the full octave. Mm -hmm. And I can see both times, like if we weren't shooting the video, this would probably have led to you going, oh, I'm just going to sit on this for a bit and see yeah. what comes out. So I do get, um, yeah, and again, you could, to, to be fair, you could have a similar experience with a 200 pound version. You know, it's like this, the, the point yeah. of this is just, is how many things are at your fingertips. It, it's they? very expansive. Yeah, yeah. Like you want, you might want that octave to be a bit dirtier than what we've got going on here. Mm -hmm. So I might chuck a fuzz on it instead. We've got the Thunderclaw and I've also got- Is that a sample of your actual Thunderclaw? Mine, yeah. yeah. And just, how long ago was that? Well, that, would have that been. was one of the very first videos I think you ever did. Was yeah, that? Is it with the Mr. Black with the massive yeah. one knob on it? It's or the black the, and yellow one. Is it's, it? it's got gain, volume, bass, treble. And so I could Mad. use the Thunderclaw if I want, or I've got the uh, Smiley, um, mm. no, the Bender we're, Fuzz. We're, we're rattling on here. And again, just to keep people in the, in the know, as well as being able to uh, profile or capture um, guitar amplifiers, this can also capture pedals. So yeah. I always forget, what do they call, is, it, is capture their lingo? Yeah, That's capture. right, profiling is someone else's lingo, isn't it? So Kendra's now I've lingo. chucked the fuzz, the silicon fuzz, the, the bender, JHS bender, right. in front of the amp that we've tuned down a whole <laughs> octave. So it should sound disgusting. That's really Maybe fun. if Rob Harris is watching, he'll ask you to send him that patch and then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do the next JK uh, get That sounded fat. Take us through then, just uh, uh, perhaps, how many patches would you typically have for like a, a Vower gig then? I would use probably all eight scenes. At the minute, I've got it in hybrid mode. So for example, this, this patch I've changed completely, but it mm -hmm. was set up to control my super cracking in MIDI. Yeah, right, right, right. So I had MIDI control from this, changing channels on the amp, and then I had different stomps along the top. So at the minute, it's kind of set up so I can run stomps on top. So let me just turn those off because, so, and let me switch back to oh, the- I was gonna say, we, so I have a stomp switch that changes the effects between Kraken and at the minute AC30. Mm -hmm. So we're back to Kraken. And then I can throw on the overdrive. Or if I want, I've got compressor because that was set up on the previous patch. I also had control over my 
reverb and delay as well. Right. So the, that's the top row, A, yeah. B, C, D, yeah. But the bottom, the bottom at the minute won't do a lot unless, for example, on scene F, I want that on and that off, and then I can. Right. You know what I mean? So I can I can see and assign stuff as well. And it makes it nice and quick, you know, so song sections is the way I look at scenes. In Vower, I would have all of these as scenes. So it'd be like verse, middle eight, or verse, pre-chorus, chorus, lead, and then I might have variations of that. But that, it, it, it sounds to me... It's just the same as using the gig rig, though. I was about me. to say, yeah. it, it's become an extension, I think, of something like the G3, hasn't it? Of yeah. just uh, less stuff to take round and more functionality, but still fundamentally the same concept, isn't it? Of a, yeah. Of a, of a rig. I mean, you could go to the venue, as long as you've got an amplifier with an effects loop and a cab, I'm fine. Because then you could turn up with that, run this cable method, yeah. and you're kind of doing what we're doing in this room. But with all your presets, all your song sections sorted. Tell us about what a game changer it's going to be when your plugin is oh. available to run on, on Core Cortex. Well, the idea that plugin compatibility is coming at all is fun for all those people that own them and have made presets for their recordings can yeah. load them up there. That's great in itself. But for me personally, why I'm so excited is the synth. Because in my plugin, you get the monophonic synth. It's, it has two oscillators you can harmonize. And it's amazing if you've ever used it. It's really, really fun. That, the idea of that coming to this is incredible because it's scene assignable. So you can, for all these different scenes, I can assign, like if you look in here. Well, let me get a different synthy kind of sound on every single scene if you wanted. Yeah, like what have I got scene assigned currently? I've got probably, yeah, so you can see what's scene assigned. And as I move, they're changing the amount. Yeah. That same principle will apply to the synth, so I can change the harmony that the oscillators are running at. Uh, the arpeggiator could change the intervals. It could change waveform. So, and not only that, I could load up four instances of it and have them all seen assigned to harmonize together, which you couldn't, it's just mad. And if anyone's played it and realized just how fun it is, because it follows all your Did you nuance. use a lot of your, um, did you use the synth effect from your plugin in a lot of the Vower stuff? Mm -hmm. So it's important that you can gig that. Yeah, because not only that, we ran, so what I normally do on any recording is run the synth, it'll mimic the bass. Mm -hmm. So it'll play exactly what the bass guitar's playing, so that you get that really consistent controlled low end. Rory will be able to run the synth in his, because he uses QC, he'll have, his, he'll have that synth running alongside his, his amp, bass amp tone, so he'll always have that controlled low end. By the way, just shout out, I haven't seen Rory for ages. Yeah. I can't tell you how happy I am for you that you're doing the Bauer thing. Yeah. So it's like, he's, su yeah, he's yeah. such a nice guy, and you know, obviously he used to do his editing thing, and there was a, that, like, I don't know, he had that sense of, you know, he, he won't mind me saying, but he was sometimes yeah, yeah. uncomfortable around other people and all that kind of stuff. So the editing thing sort of suited him. Mm. But great musician, lovely, yeah, he lovely guy. And he, he's, he got he's out like, he's out, out of he's the doing it. Yeah. I just think. And he nailed it. And we were in the yeah. studio and it was just awesome. And it's going to be really fun. So when does the world get to hear some Fowler stuff? It's going to be, it's going to be, <laughs> is that, is this like a we're, million we're in 2024 this. now. Yes. I've got so used to going, oh, it's going to be next year. So, It'll be a couple of months. Oh, wow. Yeah, because we've recorded it all. And it, to be honest, there's no point in releasing it before you're ready to start going out and playing and stuff. And there's right. a few things going on um, behind the scenes that we, that need to happen first. So like a but spring, some, spring, some, spring summer, summer festivals, summer festivals will be when we're out there doing it. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. Well, look, um, I think, it, again, I, I, hopefully we've got a bit more play because we've done a lot of talking in this video. So if there's been some sort of random bits of playing just thrown in, we've just sort of done that to try and break things up. I think it's, you know, clearly, you know, the, 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 I think it's important everybody now just has a really open mind about choosing the right gear. So, you know, you, you, Everybody, I think, should be able to go, well, what do I like the sound of? What suits my budget? What inspires me as a guitar player? Mm -hmm. What do I find simple to use? And if that's a AC30 it and a top boost to pedal and that's other. all it is, or if that's a, a plug-in, yeah. it's like, it's all 
It doesn't have to be one or the other. I think that's where people get a bit weird about it online. It's like, it really doesn't have to be that's designed to work mm. on its own or with an amplifier mm. and, vi you know. And I also think it's worth saying it's all down to context. At the end of the day, why would you use something like this in here mm -hmm. when you've got all this and you can turn it up as loud as you want to? Probably no real reason, you know? It's really down to what it is you're trying to I do. do. I, I do think a lot of it is uh, fear. Te <laughs> you know, like there, yeah. there is... there is. You use a phone every day, you use an iPad. Yeah, but I, honestly, I don't use this for anything other than making phone calls on and taking pictures of. And going on the internet. Posting on that's Instagram. True. Yeah, that's not going on YouTube. But as in, what I mean is, I have, I could have, I could have kept my iPhone two or whatever yeah. it was, yeah, and yeah. it would have been. So I do, I do to a certain extent, and I know my daughter. She picks it. You know, she's ten. She picks up the phone. She's like bloody. I sound like a right old tosser now. I don't know. But <laughs> so I do think there's a there's you know, and I do think there's that classic classic guitar community argument of just like you know unless you agree with me you must be wrong you know it's just like which is like oh, there's yes, definitely just... your tone snobs out there from both sides of it i mean there are guys that have never used an amp mm. like pliny like when i was chatting yeah. with him uh i was like so what amps do you own like what do you play mm. like at home and stuff he's like oh, i don't i don't yeah. have any john connor it's the same yeah, which is, I mean, it, until he started doing videos here, he'd never even plugged into. And it a can guitar. be uncomfortable for the for mm. guitarists like that because it's too fa it's very fast, it's very immediate. The feel of the amp and the sound. Well, I think I like the way when you blend everything together. I think it's. I a think really it's good. Yeah, your it. your way of doing it. You you just explore all the options, try it. If it works, great. If it doesn't, move yeah. on. You know. Don't have to sit and go unless you're doing it a certain way. You must be wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah. So there we are. What an open-minded, crazy way. No, let's go back to arguing in the comments section about who's right and who's wrong. Well, there you go. Look, uh, links for the Quad Cortex. In fact, for all the gear that you've seen in this video, apart from that, uh, which is something Coming else soon. that you'll have to subscribe to the Anderson's channel or follow Rabir um, or Music Man, and you'll find out more about that soon. Um, but yeah, so if you want to grab one of these, there uh, links are below. Um, I know we've been talking about this for the last three years, but I gather that any day now, the, um, uh, the Neural will start to release the um, cross-compatible plugins for this. And, and as you say, yours will be the game changer one, won't it? For it me, it will. Synth. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Soon. All right. Well, look, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in another video soon. I mean, I know that that is the sound. <laughs>